great pleasure that uh, I welcome all of you to our National Museum of Natural History, also known as Naturalis. And I also do that on behalf of uh, the local organizer, Jan van Tol, who is moving behind me, and our acting director, Dirk Houtgraaf, who I'm noticing sitting in the back of the room. Uh, first of all, I must um, apologize for receiving you um, in a city that is in the midst of its annual spasm of abandon. Um, visitors to, um, to Leiden are often not uh, fully prepared for the degree of derailment that the annual celebrations of the uh, delivery from the Spanish siege on the 3rd of October 1574 uh, accompanies. Um, I, will, um, I will not make any jokes about similarities between this historic event and the battles between DNR, DNA barcoders and traditional taxonomists. However, I must admit that these uh, events do have an impact on this conference because um, it will uh, uh, have some adverse effects on the logistics, especially where transportation is concerned. And uh, on behalf of the organizing committee, I do beg your understanding for this. Also, I apologize in advance for any ill-behaved Leideners that you might come across in the next three days. And of course, this apology goes towards the Spanish delegation especially. <laughs> Two days ago, in um, the Linnaeus Symposium in Amsterdam, Dr. Quentin Wheeler um, accused DNA barcoders of selling out taxonomy to sexy genetics and big bucks, as he called it. Um, I hope that the next three days, especially when surrounded by the austere history of two centuries, almost two centuries of Dutch taxonomy, will prove him and other critics wrong. DNA taxonomy, or DNA barcoding is not intending to replace taxonomy or systematics, rather it is intended to add a valuable extra tool for species identification. Um, however, since I've been given uh, 10 minutes, I hope you'll allow me to uh, make a short personal plea for an expansion of the activities of DNA barcoding into the realm of modern ecology. In the wake of the um, Hubble's neutral theory of biodiversity, uh, community ecologists and macroecologists have developed a keen interest in methods for understanding community structure and understanding species abundance distributions in, in habitats in nature. Um, until now, ecologists have used um, traditional species identifications or morpho species, but I think DNA barcodes could um, develop to replace these methods. And um, there are three technological developments which are happening at the moment which might make this possible. First of all, it's increasingly realized that mini barcodes, short DNA sequences of between 100 and 200 bases, are often sufficient for identifying species. Secondly, um, these hectobase length sequences are within the range generated by modern pyro sequencers. Thirdly, at the moment, the technology of pyro sequencing is advancing at such a, sp such a pace that soon it will be possible to run multiple samples on a single 400,000 whale plate at a lower cost than before. And in fact, uh, at recently, last week, we uh, submitted a proposal to the Netherlands uh, Organization for Scientific Research, together with, among others, the University of Groningen and um, the uh, Netherlands Institute for Ecological Research in which we try to combine these technological advances with mathematical algorithms for converting what we call species abundance curves into, sorry, what we call sequence abundance distributions into species abundance distributions. Um, and I would like to argue that uh, this might be an opportunity for DNA barcodes to bridge the gap between modern taxonomy and modern ecology and since Funding is one of the main uh, targets of this meeting. I think it will also allow new funding opportunities for DNA barcoding. Um, incidentally, we've called this technique provisionally 
massive barcode-based biodiversity assessment. Anyway, with that, um, I think, tantalizing thought, I would like to um, wish you once again a very happy and uh, fruitful conference, and I'd like to hand the floor back to our chairman.